So you have your sick game or film or series that you're gonna make and you know, you got the whole thing planned out, you're ready to go, but uh oh, you don't got actors for your project. This video is just gonna be me talking about, uh, you know, casting actors, how to find them, how to find the right actors, and uh, you know, just how to go through the entire um, casting process. Cause there's a lot more to it than uh, you'd think, you know, it's kind of a whole skill, you know? You know, I, I have a bit of experience uh, casting people for my own series, so I wanna make this quick little video just covering everything I've learned throughout the process. The first thing you need to do is create an audition page. There's a bunch of different like websites and forums you can use. The one that uh, I've used is called castingcall.club. It's pretty good, not sponsored. It's uh, I just like how like simple the UI is to use and stuff and they've got a pretty good like pool of actors that uh, you can find. I would say it's really good for finding actors but it's in my experience it's not very good for finding projects as an actor just because there's too many like unprofessional projects and like little kids like using it and stuff. Yeah but finding actors is really great there's a lot of like professional actors on it. For, for my series I uh, I even had a, a professional anime voice actress, Kelly Greenshield. Uh, she auditioned for my project, and I was like so shocked and so uh, honored that she auditioned. And she was in like anime, you know. And there, there are quite a few professional actors you can find on that website, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, you can use a website. You can also create auditions using Google Forms or make a social media post with the lines and the characters and ask people to email you with their auditions. If you do do this, I recommend that you create a separate email to receive auditions. If you have the means, I recommend you pay the actors, even if it's just a little bit. You know, not only for the morality of it, um, but also just because uh, if you put paid in the title of your project, it will get a lot more auditions. And uh, also the auditions will probably be a lot higher quality too. Make your uh, cast and call page very clear about what the show or the game or the project is about and include what kind of audience it's for, what, you know, whether or not it's like a, it's like for younger kids or maybe it's for like more mature audience. And uh, make sure to include things like include not just what the show is about but also in the bio of the project write down if there's swearing in the project or any mature themes uh, also include the deadline for the audition and how often you expect to receive lines from the actors so for my series manware i gave people two weeks per episode um but i also when people asked me for extensions i gave them you know extensions to be nice and uh, for the deadline to receive auditions, I recommend that you make it about two or three weeks, maybe four weeks. Yeah, but it, I, it really shouldn't be longer than that, I would say. I recommend including a lot of lines for the main characters. The Cast and Call Club website has three boxes for you to put in lines, but that's just a recommendation. You can um, put in as many lines as you want. I would recommend uh, lines for a wide variety of emotions. And include lines for things like laughing or crying because someone could be like a really good actor or their voice is really good, but maybe they just can't uh, laugh or they just can't cry, you know? Or if, if there's sneezing in your uh, show or project, make sure to include things like sneezing or things like that. Or fighting sounds if there's a lot of fight scenes in your show. Or pain sounds if your characters get injured, you know, things like that. Also, if there's singing in your project, you know, make sure to ask the actors for singing, obviously. And if your character swears, I would even include a swearing line in the audition page just so it's absolutely clear that the actors who are auditioning for this project, they need to be comfortable with swearing, if there is swearing in your show. When you pick your lines, you can use actual lines from your project's script, but uh, if you're worried about spoiling the story, you can just make up new lines or you can modify existing lines. I recommend you don't use lines from a really famous movie because it might influence the actor's performance and they might accidentally like subconsciously be uh, sort of quoting the movie, you know? And you want to hear the actual actor's performance. You don't want to just hear them copying someone else's performance, you know? Keep in mind that listening to auditions can take a lot longer than you might think. So if each audition is like one minute long, 
and you need to listen to like 30 auditions, it can take half an hour of just listening to the same lines over and over again, just listening to them say, like different voices say the same line, like, we need to get the trigger. 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 And just listening to the same line over and over and over again. So get ready for that, because that can be pretty tiring. And um, it can take a long time. Like, literally, if you have a lot of characters, it can take hours of just listening to the same words being spoken over and over again. Like, imagine that. It's, uh, it's kind of grueling, you know? Uh, and also, it can be hard to focus on trying to find a good performance when you've just uh, you've heard it so many times over and over again. So yeah, uh, you know, casting and finding actors and listening to these auditions over and over again is definitely a skill. Like it's kind of something that you can be good at, and you know, it's it's a lot harder than people uh, think. To speed things up, though, often if I if I hear a if I hear an audition and the mic is bad in the first like one second, I'll instantly just skip it and just go to the next one. You can kind of narrow things down and like, oh, let's say you have 30 auditions for a character and then you narrow down to like your top five. Sometimes it can be really tough to uh, pick between like the top five because they all sound so good and the auditions, they might even sound just like really similar. Uh, what I do in that case is I will look at the actor's websites or look at their demo reels and see who's got the best demo reel, who has the most acting credits, who uh, sort of seems like they have the most like professional sort of experience and then I'll usually go for that person. I know it kind of sucks for actors who have less experience because then if they don't have the experience it's harder for them to get roles because they don't have the experience uh, to make really strong demo reels and stuff like that. You know, that is unfortunate but you know as a as a casting director, you know, sometimes you just have to kind of make that call and just go with the people who just, uh, just have more experience because they're probably going to do a better job, you know? Not always, but, you know, if they got experience, they got the experience, you know? When you pay the actors, I recommend you use a fixed amount. So, uh, I never pay hourly. I always just have a, a set amount, like, X amount of dollars that I pay you to do this amount of lines, you know, or this, uh, these, these lines, and then, uh, that's it. The actors agree with it, and I agree with it, and then, you know, we both agree with the amount before any work gets done so no one gets scammed or anything like that. It's for them and for me, you know? Definitely what you should not do is have them do the acting first and then say, you know what, I'll pay you based on how much I like it, because that is really stupid, like, you might... You know, that's just like a horrible way to do business, like... Because <laughs> then you could just be like, oh, you know what, that act, that line was pretty good, yeah, I'll give you five bucks. And I'll be like, what, five bucks? That line deserves 20 bucks, you know? It just doesn't make any sense to do that. Um, I would consider DMing the actors before you cast them and make sure they're absolutely comfortable with the compensation. Uh, I had one at one time where I, I cast an actor, and uh, after I cast them, they weren't comfortable um, with the amount of compensation, even though the audition page said how much their character would be paid for the whole show. And, um, you know, it was just kind of rough because, you know, I said how much the role was going to be, and if they weren't comfortable with it, they could have just not auditioned or they could have DM'd me and asked if I was able to increase the rate. If they had these concerns, I just wish they reached out to me first because there were a lot of other uh, auditions and stuff and I, I could have cast someone else. So yeah, cons consider DMing people. But usually that doesn't happen. Usually if, you know, you say what the rate is on the website, then, you know, they understand how much they're gonna be paid. And just be absolutely transparent about that. When you finally do cast your actors, make sure both parties are just absolutely comfortable with the uh, compensation and make sure you both sign a contract that clearly states how much the talent will be paid for the compensation and also they clearly outline the obligations of you and the talent. I recommend that you look up a contract template and then modify it. If you write one from scratch and you're not a lawyer, there might be loopholes or problems with the wording that you might not realize while you're writing it. So I really recommend just looking up a contract template. Make sure you include things like 
you are not obligated to use any of the voice actor's work in case you need to recast them, or you have the right to modify or use any of the audio that they send you and use it however you see fit, including for promotional material and social media. Make sure that you both sign and date it. Uh, that's really important. Okay, another thing is uh, don't do any like weird unnecessary things, like force them to do an interview or something. I had one friend who was like auditioning for a project that was an unpaid project and then the person said like they have to do an interview before they get cast and stuff and um i just kind of think all that stuff is kind of unnecessary like when uh when i cast actors i just i'm like yo here's the lines you know they they all do their auditions i listen to all the auditions i pick them and then when i pick them i send them the scripts they read it they send me the audio i send them the money and then that's it, you know, we don't need to call or anything, or we don't need to do anything like that. You know, not to say you shouldn't try to be friends with all your actors or anything, you can, you know, talk to them and, uh, you know, try to be friends, I guess, but, uh, I would just, like, I don't know, so, like, some people just make them go through these whole, uh, like, interview process and stuff, and I just think all that stuff is really unnecessary. Also, uh, my last tip is, uh, you know, just be kind and be professional to all your actors, you know? Don't do anything, like, weird or, like, god forbid, don't, like, hit on them or anything like that, or don't, uh, I mean, this should go without saying, but don't make any, like, sexual comments about them or do anything, like, fucking weird, you know? Just be professional and be nice and be friendly, you know? And, um... You know, don't be, like, a dick, just be pleasant, you know? I mean, that kinda should go without saying, like, don't be a dick, but, uh, you know, some people are just, like, really horribly unprofessional, and so I'll just throw that on as, like, a little tip, like, just in case someone was considering being a dick, and then they hear this, and they're like, you know what? You know what? I'm not gonna do that instead. Oh yeah, one last thing. Uh, if an actor is just being really, like, disrespectful, or really, you know, they're just being kinda unprofessional and just acting like a, like a dick, then, uh, you know, don't be afraid to recast them. So yeah, that's basically, um, all the tips I had about casting people. Uh, if you want to see the series that I was talking about, it's called Manware. It's pretty sick. Uh, I'm actually, the footage that you're watching right now, uh, is from, is, uh, me working on the show. And the first episode's out, so you can check it out on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash theapoke. If you like this video, make sure to dislike, unsubscribe, and add this to your watch later playlist.